Hey guys, this is the MMA Breakdown, and we're doing predictions for UFC Fight Night 114. Pettis versus Moreno. Follow me on Twitter. My link is in the description, at MMA Breakdown Zero. And also, uh, if you haven't checked out my predictions yet for UFC 214, those will be linked in the description as well. Um, yeah, uh, Fight Night, Pettis versus Moreno. Uh, first fight on the Fight Pass prelim card, a lightweight. Alvaro Herrera versus Jordan Rinaldi. Um, Rinaldi, in his debut fight against Abel Trujillo, was able to have success in moments, uh, would be able to land something, uh, would be able to connect cleanly on the feet at times, did get on top of Trujillo at uh, one point, took his back. Um but I just feel like Rinaldi was really uh, letting Trujillo dictate the pace of that fight, was, was really content to sit back and um, see what Trujillo gave him. And I just feel like that isn't a really dominant style. It, it's not going to be a style for him to have a lot of success. And Herrera, um, especially in Mexico... I just feel like he's going to be the one coming out here, uh, applying his offense, looking for the finish. He had a surprise knockout win over Vernon Ramos in his debut, and Ramos was the guy who made it to the semifinals when Herrera lost um, in the preliminary fights. Uh, so that was a surprise knockout win. And then against Vicente Luque, while he got out-wrestled and eventually submitted, I didn't think he looked all that bad. Didn't really look outclassed by Luque, um, at least not physically or really skill-wise. Just didn't have enough takedown defense. But that fight went into the second round. Um, so I'm just going to go with Herrera by knockout. It, it's kind of a ridiculous pick. I know Rinaldi looks like a, a much more refined overall MMA fighter. But those tough Latin America guys, they have a way of really surprising uh exceeding expectations and Rinaldi just seemed too passive to me um so I'm gonna take Herrera by knockout all right at flyweight Joseph Morales versus Roberto Sanchez both debuting fighters Morales is a team alpha male fighter Sanchez uh fights out of a camp in Texas and honestly just because of the camp I'm gonna go with uh, Morales here uh they're very similar fighters both submission based fighters both have a lot of submission wins on their record morales from what i was able to see um more of a creative grappler you know will uh, attempt things off of his back you know triangles reverse triangles uh you know will look to um will look to attempt submissions from unorthodox positions whereas sanchez looks more of a classic uh take down and back take guy and actually from the footage i was able to see sanchez seems more of a finisher um you know when he gets the back he will capitalize and end the fight whereas morales will uh chain a bunch of submission attempts together and actually one fight of his that i was able to see it went the distance um and he had a lot of submission attempts but didn't finish any of them so I don't know. Um, seems like a pretty competitive fight to me. One guy didn't look clearly better, but I'll go with Morales because he seems like the more fluid, more dynamic grappler. Um, and just, again, because of uh, the camp, him coming out of Alpha Male, I think they're doing great right now. I trust them. So I'll go with Morales by submission. All right, at Bantamweight, Jose Alberto Quinones versus Diego Rivas, uh, two tough Latin America contestants. From the same season, uh, the first season, and I think Canones has the more complete game, and we've seen that in the UFC. However, Revis I think is more of a a surprise finisher. That flying knee knockout against Noad Lahat really came out of nowhere. Was really surprising, um, but he was losing that fight early on. Got taken down. I think had to fight out of. Uh, I think I had his back taken in that fight. Um, and Quinones can do that. Uh, he can take guys down, get their back on the feet. He's um, fairly technical, uh, 
has knees and elbows in the clinch. I actually thought he won the uh, finale fight against uh, Alejandro Perez, uh, but had a nice complete performance, at least on the feet, against Joey Gomez and Rivas. Other than the flying knee knockout win against Lahat, out wrestled Rodolfo Rubio, who's who was uh, a washout, honestly, from that tough season. So, Canones has more fights under his belt. Um, well, only one more fight, <clears throat> but just seems to me to have the more complete game and a little technically sharper. So I'm going with uh, Quinones here. At Bantamweight, Henry Briones versus Hani Yaya. And this to me is a crazy matchup. I don't know how Briones, uh, how his takedown defense is, how he's going to do against uh, a world-class grappler like Yaya. But we know that Yaya... Um, can be a little bit of a head case at times, as I felt he was in his last fight against Soto. Came out just throwing everything at him, trying to uh, finish him on the feet, and he was doing well, but uh, just expended so much energy that he was uh, dead in that third round, and Soto was just able to get on top of him and just win basically by uh, having a little more cardio and just uh, it managing to get himself on top and uh, hold in that third round so I don't think yeah I certainly don't think Yaya is going to strike with Briones because this might be his toughest uh, test on the feet um, in a long time that he's had in the UFC Briones is a good um, effective striker so I don't know um, Yaya's game just feels a little tired at this point I feel like Briones with his striking he's going to pose a stiffer test than uh, Tanaka or Matthew Lopez did in their matchup. So you know what? I'm going to go with Briones. I know a, another kind of crazy pick here, but, man, Yaya just looks like he can be worn out throughout a fight. Briones, I thought, was on his way to winning a decision against, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, the Brazilian fighter who just lost to Rob Fine. Um ended up getting knocked out but was definitely ahead on the cards and was doing a lot of good work with his boxing in that fight uh, and I believe he was going to the body in that fight and that's something he could do to Yaya to really slow down his grappling game um, I'm just going to take Briones here I think he's got too uh, crafty of a, a boxing game you know the guy went three rounds against Garbrandt yeah I'm going to go with Briones but that's contingent upon Yaya not being able to get the takedown. If Yaya can get the takedown, we've never seen Briones there, you know, off of his back. So um, at that point, I would really favor Yaya. But uh, another weird matchup, and I just think it's something different for Yaya here, having to face a, a really uh, a good, effective striker. So I'm going to take Briones. A flyaway Dustin Ortiz versus Hector Sandoval. Justin Ortiz to me feels like a guy who's kind of falling off and he's not old you know he's 28 but this is a guy who's been in the uh, flyweight division now for years and we saw it in his last fight against Moreno um, was doing great uh, really smothering him and uh, applying his uh, wrestling uh, on him but ate that head kick in the third round or in the second round I believe uh, that put him down and Moreno jumped on him and uh, subbed him out so I I don't know I feel like Ortiz it's it's too risky a style to uh, have to out wrestle someone for three rounds he's not a finisher had one had two has two finishes in the UFC but against weak competition Willie Gates and Jose Maria Tome um and Sandoval, we just saw massive power from him in his last fight against Schnell. Uh, put in a solid performance against, um, who's the, uh, Freddie Serrano. Uh, really stayed on him with his boxing for three rounds in that fight. Uh, kind of got worked by Wilson Hayes once the fight got to the mat, but he was going after him on the feet. And even Ortiz's uh, win against... Uh, um, Zach Makovsky, while he was doing well, you know, still gave Makovsky opportunities in that fight to take his back or to uh, reverse position, and that was a split decision win. So 
I just think like I just think that Ortiz's style is a, it's a little too hard for him to have success at the higher level now. Sandoval, I expect him to get a little uh, out wrestled for a bit, like Moreno was, but just seems to have a lot of power. Uh, will have an athletic advantage. I feel in this fight certainly has the striking advantage. Um, I think he's just going to uh, catch Ortiz at some point in the fight and hurt him bad and put him away. So I have to go with Hector Sandoval, another you know close matchup. But I just think Ortiz, you know, that style is too hard to make work now and really paid for it against Moreno. Uh, Sandoval's got big power, so Sandoval by TKO. At middleweight, Brad Scott versus Jack Hermanson. Uh, Hermanson should really take this one. Pretty handily, I feel. Scott, decent kickboxer, uh, and that's about it. Um, pretty inconsistent. Has been a win-loss since he's come into the UFC. And against guys with a little bit more technical games like Claudio, Enrique Da Silva. Um, who else? Uh, well, only uh, Christoph Yoko. Um, you know, his kind of medium output kickboxing isn't enough to get the job done even his last fight against Askham was uh, a split decision and he wasn't all that dominant in it and I believe got hurt at one point in that fight Hermanson just looks like a step above that technically uh, the way he emphatically put out Alex Nicholson you know Scott hasn't really had a performance like that um, Hermanson on the ground uh, I think uh you know, really capitalize on Nicholson and seems like a guy, if he gets the fight to the ground, can make his way to the back or just uh, get to a dominant position. And on the feet, um, Hermanson's unorthodox style, uh, I think that's going to be enough to uh, trump the pretty basic kickboxing of Brad Scott. So I really like Hermanson here, and I think I'm going to take him to uh, get a finish. All right, on to the Fox Sports 1 main card at Bantamweight, Alejandro Perez. Versus Andre Sukumtha. This to me is another uh, really weird matchup. Um, I favor Perez because of the volume. Uh, Sukumtha to me is he's technical, but just a little a little too patient, um, a little too willing to uh, sit back and uh, let his opponent dictate the pace of the fight, as uh, Albert Morales did in uh, his debut fight. Perez also fought Morales in his last fight, and uh, I felt that was a more competitive fight, at least on the feet. Um, Perez, I just think, has more volume, and Sukumtha is technical, but I don't really see him as a knockout striker. I know he does have some finishes uh, on his record. Actually, has three finishes uh, before his UFC debut, but um, I don't know. Um Honestly, I can see him beating Perez. Kind of hard to picture that happen. Uh, hard to picture that happening in Mexico. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Perez had the more competitive fight with Morales. And it's just uh, has m more volume and will look, to, uh, will look to chase the finish more. So, I like Perez, but, you know, he could run into a counter, I feel, and get put out. Um, it's a weird fight, but I'm going to side with Perez. Uh, I'm going to say he wins by decision. All right, a middleweight Sam Alvey versus Rashad Evans. Uh, another totally uh, weird, bizarre fight. Um, Evans should have the, the technical advantages in this fight. He should definitely be the one to land more, uh, be more consistent with his offense over three rounds. That's really hurt Alvey. Um, nearly dropped a decision to Marquardt that way. Uh, he did lose to Lytez because of that. Just has a problem with inactivity, with coming forward and leading in fights. But man, I just don't trust Evans. He looked better dropping to middleweight, but you know it still wasn't enough to get the win against Kelly. I thought he won that fight, but it just looks like he's still just a step behind from really being able to get wins at this level anymore. And with Alvi's power, um, who did knock out uh, Kelly, by the way, um, I just feel like his power is going to be the difference here. If he doesn't put out Evans, at least uh, hurt him enough to uh, 
steal a round or two. So I'm going with Alvy, but super weird fight. And I think I'll go with Alvy by decision. I don't know, that sounds crazy to me, but uh, I can't trust Evans to get a win. Next up at Featherweight, Martin Bravo versus Umberto Bandene. Martin Bravo was the winner of Tough Latin America Season 3. Got the win over Claudio Pueyes to win that season. And had a nice uh, finishing sequence uh, in that fight. Um, was landing the jab hard. Uh, went to the body. Um, he's a good uh, good striker. Um, Bandene. Uh, in the couple of fights of his that I was able to see. Doesn't look like a bad fighter, but I think certainly looks like he's in the earlier stages of his development, like um, like a typical contestant on Tough Latin America. You know, Some of these guys really make great strides um, after the show when they've entered the UFC, like a Marlon Vera, um, yeah, your Rodriguez, Gabriel Benitez. But Bandene, uh to me, still seems like he's pretty early uh, on in his development. It seems like he's fighting weak competition, but um, he's winning and he has some submission wins. Uh, looks like an okay striker, but I think Bravo has the more technical striking game. Um, has... Uh, the ability to finish the fight uh, on the feed, and he's been through tough already. I think he's uh, more refined at this point and a higher level MMA fighter. So I'm going to go with Bravo to win this one, but Bandene is kind of an unknown. Um, but I'm going with Bravo. At Walter Wade, Alan Joe Band versus Nico Price. Um, to me, Price is uh, pretty much roadkill for Joe Band. Uh, in this fight, um, I don't really see what he can do to Joe Ban at all. Uh, had the nice knockout over Alex Morono. Uh, good uh, wrestling and submission skills shown against Brandon Thatch. Uh, but Joe Ban's a much higher level fighter uh, than Price. And Price still seems like he has a really... Um, rudimentary striking game he got dropped by Alex Morono and didn't um, offer a whole lot of uh, output in that fight before uh, landing the knockout shot uh, looked kind of like a fluky thing you know Morono dipped right into the uppercut just uh, as the bell rang and got knocked out um, I don't really know what to say you know Joe Ban's been in there with high level guys even if he's lost like Joe Ban uh, but survived and went three rounds against Mike Perry. Pretty much uh, outclassed him on the feet. Um, Joe Ban's got a lot more creativity, diversity to his striking. Um, good output. Uh, really skilled kickboxer. And Price just seems like a guy with some power, some ground skills. And uh, has doesn't really have a high level, well put together game. So... To me, this is, should be an easy uh, win for Joe Ban. Um, and I think he can finish Price because Joe Ban, uh, he really gets after it when he has an overmatched opponent, like against Brendan, Ry Brendan O'Reilly, uh, Richard Walsh. So I'm going to take uh, Joe Ban here and probably by, by TKO. But at the very least, uh, I think uh, an easy decision win for Joe Ban. And women's strawweight, Randa Marcos versus Alexa Grasso. Uh, I think Marcos should be able to out-wrestle Grasso here. Um, I haven't seen any of Grasso's fights pre-UFC, but um, she looked okay against Heather Joe Clark, although never really uh, came close to a finish. And against Felice Herrig, um, got outstruck and <clears throat> really... <clears throat> really struggled to pull the trigger, let her hands go, and that seems to be a common theme with the Lobo camp. Um, Renee Ald Aldana seems to suffer from the same thing, but uh, I don't know what any of that really suggests about her wrestling, um, at least you know anything positive. Uh, Marcos is a really solid wrestler. 
uh, managed to get the win, even though I didn't think she deserved it against Carla Esparza, and to to even be competitive with Esparza on the ground uh, really is a credit to her wrestling. And we've seen when she fights um, fighters who aren't very good wrestlers, uh, her wrestling is uh, more than enough to get the decision win, like against Liebarger, Ashling Daly. Um, yeah, so I think uh, Marcos takes this one. I don't expect Grasso to uh, you know, have the jiu-jitsu skills of Courtney Casey or the takedown defense. And on the feet, she doesn't even seem to be um, all that much of a threat. So uh, I like Marcos for uh, a decision win here where she out-wrestles uh, Grasso for three rounds pretty easily. All right, in the main event at flyweight, Sergio Pettis versus Brandon Moreno. Um, I really like Moreno to win this. Uh, I think he has exactly the style that uh, has beaten Pettis before. Uh, Pettis should definitely have the technical striking advantage, and while he doesn't put people away and um, doesn't look all that flashy or really have super impressive performances, still looks like a guy who's uh, who's improving his uh, striking technique fight to fight. And can really pick people apart and uh, kind of pitch a shutout, like against Moraga, um, and Chris Kalades. But uh, Brandon Moreno, this guy is an animal, uh, super tough. And Pettis has broken latent fights that he was absolutely dominating, like the Ryan Benoit fight, um, the Alex Caceres fight, even against Chris Cariasso. I uh, was looking great in that fight, but managed to be put on his back and held down for that entire third round. So the guy always gives um, a later round away, and I don't think in championship rounds this guy is going to um, hold up against an animal like Moreno, uh, who you know is getting out-wrestled in the Dustin Ortiz fight, lands that head kick, and just jumps on his back and squeezes the life out of him. Uh, Pettis has lost by submission, like I just said to Casera. So um, I'm absolutely taking Moreno here. I think Pettis should uh, have uh, a big uh, advantage early on. I could see him winning even three rounds, but uh, he's not a finisher. Pettis does not have any finishes in the UFC. Um and this is a five-round fight, and the guy's given a, given away a uh, third round. So those two things, the fact that he's not a finisher and that uh, Moreno's going to have five rounds to survive here and work, uh, I think are really working against Pettis. So I really like Moreno for the, uh, the late finish. I'm going to say uh, maybe a fourth-round submission win for Moreno. All right, my most confident picks on this card are going to be Moreno, uh, Joe Ban, Marcos, Hermanson, and Hector Sandoval. All right, guys, those are my predictions for Fight Night 114. Thank you for watching. Again, my Twitter link will be in the description at MMA Breakdown Zero. Um, if you haven't already seen my UFC 214 predictions, those will be linked there too. And my betting video for UFC 214 as well. I'll have a betting video for this event out um, in the week leading up to the event. Um, and then we got a month layoff before the next event. Fight Night Strew versus Volkov. Um, I'm looking forward to the layoff. Uh, we're going to come back, uh, re-energize, and hopefully uh, some of my bets will uh, have worked out uh, by then. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys then. Take care. Bye.